This is Glyn Macy. He is a painter, mixed media artist and adventurer living in Wild West Cornwall with his wife, Kerry, and his children, Tal and Katie. His studio is based in the historic quarter of Penzance in a grade two listed building on Chapel Street. Having grown up on the shores of the Atlantic, his work is inspired by the oceans and coastlines, harbors and rugged landscapes of Cornwall. He works mostly in acrylic, building up layers of colour and texture with glazing techniques to create vibrant, bold pieces that show the energy and movement of a place. Alongside his studio work, he solo travels extensively and each year spends a few months visiting somewhere new, painting his way around the location and partnering with a charity. From this, he creates a huge body of work which culminates in original paintings, exhibitions, prints, and a book with a percentage going towards the chosen charity. He also runs painting workshops, both in person and online, and has a library of classes to choose from. Today, I chat with him about how growing up in Newlyn played an influential part in him becoming a painter, his love of travel and adventure, and how becoming more childlike and experimental is key to his creative process. I'm Mel Chadwick, this is Season 2, Episode 2. Welcome to Creative Conversations. Hi guys, welcome to another Creative Conversation. I'm here in the studio of painter Glyn Macy. Welcome, Glyn. Hello, thank you. Well, thank Thanks. you for letting us come and be in your studio today. Oh. We're here in Penzance, and this is where your studio is based. Yeah. Could you actually tell us a little bit about your background, where you grew up, and what <coughs> kind of took you in the direction of becoming a painter? Yeah, sure. Well, I, I'm from Newlyn, mm. which is just the other side of the bay, about two miles from Penzance. And in Newlyn, when I was growing up, yeah, everybody's either a fisherman or an artist. They're, they're your two choices. And if you know, Newlyn's very famous for the Newlyn School of Painters, Victorian painters, which are just incredible. And so kind of I grew up with this atmosphere of these Victorian Newlyn School painters around. And I was kind of walking home from school, seeing the same views. And I used to kind of go home and paint my own little 10 year old versions. <laughs> and, and I've just not stopped. And so I'm kind of still doing it now, essentially. It was as simple as that. Simple as that. Fisherman or artist. Fisherman or artist. And um, literally as simple as that. Yeah. And so did you go off to college? Did you do any training or did you just kind of <coughs> keep I, painting? And I did both, actually. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I went to art college, but I studied graphic design. Oh, right. And so, um, so I worked as a graphic designer and illustrator and, you know, in advertising and marketing and all of those kind of things to earn a living. But at the same time, I was still painting. And that's something I was doing from the age of about three. And... Um, and then when the painting took over from the design, I quit design, concentrated on the painting. And yeah, here I am. And have you always been based in Cornwall? Based in Cornwall, but I work all over the world. Yeah. Literally all over the world. So, um, so very much I've always come home. And, you know, this is my home. Um, and it's great to be surrounded by friends and family and all the rest of it. Um, but, um, but for me, the whole kind of exciting part comes from the travel. Yeah. How do you run your business? What different things do you do? Uh, well, my business is, is, is kind of multi-layered, really, in as much as, you know, I teach workshops. Yeah. Um, uh, more than anything, because it's the one time I get to talk with people. Because, you know, <laughs> as, as an artist, it's, it's very, very solitary. You know, it's just usually just like me and Radio 4. And um, so I get, to, I, get to, I get to have some new friends for the day. Yeah. Um, so, that, so I teach workshops. Um, but um, and, and I write a lot. I write the books, um, and um, and I've done. You know, I've made TV programs and all sorts of stuff. But um, primarily, my main focus is is working on my big projects. Yeah. So I work on big projects, travel projects with um, charities from Greenpeace to UNICEF to RNLI, um, World Land Trust. You know, all sorts of different charities, and um, uh, and those projects become my big kind of driving. Yeah 
driving forward. So how did you kind of start doing those? <sighs> well, um, it's something that's, that's always interested me. Is when, <laughs> funny enough, it was when I, I bought my first camper van. Yeah. And, and um, I was traveling around in my van and uh, I did a big project. I paid to Moray around the English coast. This is 10 years ago. Yeah. From berwick upon tweed clockwise up to the Solway Firth. And I painted at 180 locations all the way around the English coast. And um, those paintings were all auctioned for the RNLI because I've got a big history with the RNLI. So this is a fundraising project for them. It did brilliantly, I mean, it raised a lot of money, but it did brilliantly for me as well, because suddenly the amount of publicity I got, I went from being sort of an artist known in Cornwall to yeah. an artist known nationally. So it made a big difference in that sense. Um, and it was great, you know, my bike on the back, kayak on the roof, <laughs> living on like fish and chips and Mars bars. It and was just were you brilliant. on your own? Yeah, I was on yeah. my own. Yeah, it was just great <laughs> sleeping on beaches and things like that, yeah. pub car parks. It was just, it's, it's, it's really, I'm a bit of an itinerant kind of, um, gypsy artist, if you like. <laughs> Although I do have a house, yeah. Um, but um, but yeah, that's that's essentially where that came from. Yeah. Um, got back, projected really well, um, and I thought, right, you know, where next? And um, and so yes, it's that's the kind of formula that I tend to tend to work with. So do you at the beginning of a year plan out what you're going to do? Yeah, like, absolutely. Things that you want to do, absolutely. Workshops that you book in. Yeah, and, yeah. And, books that you want to work on yeah absolutely it's it's um it's surprising actually i think to to most people when you look at artists it looks like um it's quite a sort of free and easy way of doing yeah. things in actual fact it's probably a lot more structure that goes into it you know i've been fortunate to get to know a lot of um professional artists over the years and um one thing that does a, a trait that comes out really is that there's a lot of structure in there working life there has to be really yeah. otherwise you kind of free wheel so there has to be a lot of structure in that sense and um uh that's about as much structure as there is of course <laughs> yeah. the rest of it is just having fun but yeah. yeah so um do you have do you do all of the admin yourself or do you have like a, a team i do no um it depends what it is again depends what it is my wife does a lot of it as yeah. well you know absolutely my sort of partner in crime really in that sense um and so between the two of us, um, you know, everything gets done as it should and yeah. on time, um, which is which is good. Um, but then it depends what it is, if it's if it's, you know, shooting the the, uh, the online video content or, or TV programs or, or whatever, or the books, then there'll be other teams involved as well. So, yeah, I just find it amazing, though, that you're so quite diverse in how you, um, I guess, <laughs> I want to say monetize, I guess, your yeah. business. Yeah. You're able to kind of like pull on these different strands <clears throat> that it's not just just do a painting mm. and go to a gallery. You you seem to have really thought about it in a business way. I think yeah, I think you have to. Some of it's by just chance opportunity. Yeah. Things have just come along, and I've been you know people. Uh, you know, I'm a big fan um, of dropping myself in the deep end. Yeah. And 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 taking challenges that I've got real no idea about. And then I panic and think, am I going to do this? You know, and uh, nowadays you just go to YouTube and learn how to do it. But back in my day, I'd go to the library and get a book, you know. Um, so I think um, with that in mind, I'm, I'm, that's where a lot of that's come from. But um, it's just all about learning new skills, you yeah. know. And I think um, if you're constantly learning new skills and, and dropping yourself in the deep end, it, it really stands you in good stead. Yeah. I want to talk about um, your process for creating work, for creating your paintings. Mm. So how, how does that work? How do you get inspiration and how do you go about creating it, your piece? It's my way of working is different to a lot of artists in as much as I don't really have a process. I don't have a process at all. Um, what I'm, what I'm always looking to do is, is, is to capture the layers of interest in something. So, I mean, there's a big painting behind me there. I've just, I just did a project about all about the Tinner's Way, which is an 18 mile footpath. Yeah. Runs from Cape Cornwall to St Ives across the backbone of Penwith. And um, this footpath is 5,000 years old. So there's 5,000 years of layers of history, story, legend, um, birth of the... Uh, Bronze Age, birth of the Industrial Age, all rolled in, um, and 
So when I'm creating the work, I'm trying to capture all of those layers. So instead of just the purely visual aspect, yeah. um, I want to capture the history and the stories to go with it, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, kind of, when I started off painting, you know, it was all about sort of the picture postcard view. And then I, I realised after a while I wanted more than that. Mm. And that's where this work comes into it. Yeah. So with that in mind, I use a lot of fan materials in the work, a lot of collage, um, a lot of collected um, tap, essentially. <laughs> and, um, but again, it's just to capture that. Yeah. Um, so you go to a new place and do you, you, obviously you're looking at the landscape, you're looking at what kind of sparks your interest, the colours. Yeah. Um, but then you're also wanting to research the history. Absolutely, yeah. The research is a big, big part yeah. of it. And, um, and when, I'm, when I then go and explore the new location, I'm trying to capture it with, with all of my senses as well. So obviously artists are using their eyes all the time yeah. um, and they're sketching or they're painting studies or whatever, which I do as well. But um, that's only using one sense. So what I like to do is I'm making written notes of overheard conversations, what the temperature's like, if it's sunny, you know, yeah. plants that are out at that time. Um, I might make sound recordings on my, using the phone. Um, might be crashing waves, might be birdsong, might be, you know, tractors, might be traffic. Um, so I'm using, trying to use all of those senses to, to capture the atmosphere in its, in its kind of uh, most rounded form yeah. and then feed it all into the painting. And do you then come back to the studio and work on it with all of these kind of things? Initially outdoors. Or, so most yeah. of the work's made outdoors. Yeah. Um, and then it might come back to the studio to, to um, uh, maybe layer it up a little bit yeah. more, maybe correct things if I need to. Um, or it might just be a practical sense. You know, if, I, if it's big canvases, big works, you know, it might just work better in the studio because yeah. it's not getting blown around by no. the wind, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so then come back to the studio and, um, and start to distill all of those elements and bring them together. Yeah. So do you have, like, a kit that you take with you? Uh, that's my kit. It's in this bag. <laughs> this little bag here. That's the kit. Um, there's very little in there, actually. There's about three or four brushes and about six paints <laughs> yeah. and um, a whole bunch of mount board that I paint on and um, and some glue yeah that's about it <laughs> talking earlier about your trip to America mm. um, and the fact that you just um, just basically rented a car and mm. drove across America and painted your way across yes yeah it just sounds really quite incredible that you just went and did that um, well I, I, again you know it just it all comes on the back of this that original English coast project yeah. and and um, it kind of just really worked for me and, and it worked for the charity and, and um, you know, it just gets, I love to get people involved. And as I say, you know, being an artist, it's very sort of solitary. So it's just me and Radio 4. So I do like to get people involved yeah. if I can. Yeah. And certainly with the project, people really get involved um, and uh, follow me. And with social media now, of course, you know, I can be posting constantly, you know, posting updates of where I am and what I'm yeah. doing and all the rest of it. And, um, and, and people seem to really enjoy that. And so that's fantastic for me because I've got that sort of two-way yeah. thing happening. Um, so, yeah, so when it came to the America, America trip, I just thought, you know, where do I, where do I want to go next? And, and I, America was never really somewhere on my list, really, but I just kind of just stuck a pin in the map. Yeah. And um, literally. <laughs> and um, I thought, OK, well, the English coast is actually 3,000 miles, funny enough. Um, and I thought, well... Coast to coast, New York to Los Angeles is 3,000 miles as well, so I'll give that a go. <laughs> and, um, Did uh, you know anyone in America? I had a, a couple of friends that live in... Um, I had, had friends in, in uh, New York, just outside of New York, and friends in um, Santa Barbara, yeah. the other side, yes. and no one in the middle. <laughs> no. And so I was by myself for about a month, and um, it, was, it was good. It was just that bag. I had a yeah. box, box full of CDs. Um, and, um, and that was it. Yeah, and the road. And the road, yeah, which was f incredible. Mm. Um, it, just in incredible country. Yeah. And, and fantastic people, actually, as well, um, which I wasn't expecting. But um, it was, it was, that, that was great. But then you get some scary bits as well. Yeah. You yeah. know, take a wrong turn in and find yourself in. <laughs> some place. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a place that, yeah, 
You must have so many good memories, though. So many, well, so many memories. So many, yeah. so many memories. Yeah. No, it was, it was a fantastic trip. It really yeah. was an incredible trip, and um, and that that was great. That was great. And you now have like a a little book of that trip yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. There's the book that came out for that. I, t- I, I, I tend to um, a book tends to be published for all of my projects. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, yeah, there's one for each of them. So whether that's um, the America trip. You know, which is which is an entire continent and three thousand miles, or whether it's the Tinners Way, which is yeah. an eighteen mile footpath. Just as much attention, I put t- just as much attention into an eighteen mile footpath as I do into a three thousand mile road trip. So, um, uh, you know, and it could be very very close to home, or it can be the Arctic, which I've just come back from, yeah. painting my way around the Arctic. So it could be something as big as that, or something as small as a footpath, and um, gets the same attention. Yeah. And then gets the book, and the book's kind of like my, almost like a full stop to it, and it sort of encapsulates everything yeah. Yeah. forevermore. Do you think that's quite important, actually? It's, it is for me, yeah. because um, I was finding that my projects before, I would do the work, um, be really pleased, do maybe put on an exhibition, a couple of weeks later the exhibition finishes, and then it kind of dissipates as if it never really happened. Mm. And... Um, so, you know, it's all about capturing it so that I can, cut, when I'm an old man, when I'm even older than I am <laughs> yeah. now, I can look back and think, oh, look at that. Yeah. I think that's actually really important. Yeah. It, I definitely think it, it, it kind of completes it. It does. Yeah. That's exactly what it does. Yeah. It completes yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. And then you can tick it off and then you're on to your next. Yeah. You free up that space in your head as mm. well to move on to your next project. Exactly that. Exactly that. Yeah. Um, a lot of your work, um, you use acrylic. Mm. Is that the only medium you use? No, I paint in all... Well, I use all, all mediums. Um, I paint a lot on watercolour, um, oils, inks, all sorts of stuff. I use all mediums, but acrylics are kind of... really do it for me because... Mm. Um, particularly if I'm travelling, because acrylics, they dry quickly. Yeah. I can glaze with them. A lot of my work is about glazing, so I'm taking colours and glazing over the top to create those that kind of rich vibrancy. Yeah. So glazing, um, so that's where acrylics come into it. Um, but also acrylics work brilliantly with um, collage, yeah. so and fan materials. So if I'm using sand and shells off a beach or leaves from a woodland or litter from the streets of New York or something, it will tie in brilliantly yeah. with acrylic. Yeah. So, yeah. And also the way that you put the paint on your canvases is just seems to be very bold you don't seem to be frightened of you know your paint marks you just kind of go for it yeah it feels like there's a lot of freedom um, yeah when you're painting yeah and it comes through in your final pieces is that what <coughs> you feel when you're doing it it is and um that's exactly what it is and that's what i want to capture as well and so you know i, I paint a lot of um most of, as i say most of my work is made on on site and and if i'm painting small studies by necessity, they might be painted quite quickly, mm. and um, and you get those you get the really fluid, fast marks. Yeah. And the challenge, I think, for an artist, or certainly for me, is to is to keep that fluidity in the larger works because yeah. they they sometimes get a little bit more staid. And um, so yes, yeah, so I just use the big brushes, got the music on loud and yeah. dancing around, and that on it on you know, the paint goes on, and and I think. Um, by working in that way, just having the confidence to, confidence to put the paint on and just let it go. Yeah. Um, drips, dribbles, you know, whatever it does, let it go and then work with it. Um, instead of trying to control everything. Yeah. So you very much like to experiment, I yeah, guess. Yeah, absolutely. It's all about experimentation. It's all about exploration. Yeah. So whether that's putting paint on a canvas, that's about exploration. Whether it's about travelling around the world, um, same thing. If If it's walking a footpath and not knowing what's around the corner or not knowing what that plant is or not knowing what that bird is it's exploration so for me everything comes down to that exploration that's mm-hmm. what really kind of drives me forward yeah it makes it it's exciting isn't it you never know what you can find and it, no, and it's a constant learning curve yeah. you know i love i love learning i just love learning things you know and i think a day doesn't go by that i don't learn something and um Again, that's where the research comes into it. So it's just all about yeah. exploring and, 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 um, and learning. Mm. Keeping your mind fresh. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, you know, however much 
you know, I've been painting for like a hundred years and, and I said, you sort of tend to think, one minute you sort of think I know it all and then suddenly I realise I don't actually know anything. And, and, and I think that's really important to, to, to um, realise that you don't actually know it all and there's so much more to know, so much more to explore and, and, and learn. And that is hugely exciting. And that's really motivating, I think, as well, thinking that, OK, well, I haven't got quite... I don't know everything, so yeah. it kind of pushes you forward. It really does. And, and um, you know, I do a lot of work with... Um, or I've done a lot of work with children in schools and, 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 and workshops. And, you know, what's so... We were chatting about it earlier. You know, what's so brilliant about kids, of course, is that they just want to know, you know, why, why, why? <laughs> yeah. You know, why, why, why? And I find that hugely exciting. You don't tend to get it from adults so much no. because adults, again, kind of think they know lots of things. Children just go, why is that? Why is that? Why, why? And, and so I tend to think a little bit like that, you know. Um, and that, that's, uh, that's exciting and, and infuriating at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Depends who you're with. Where would you like to see your business uh, going in a year or five <clears> years? <throat> now these projects work out so well for me and, and, um, and I just love doing them. And there's, you know, so much to explore. Um, it's, it's very much about um about concentrating on these projects um i've got a, i've got a list of journals with my ideas in far more ideas than i could ever actually do which yeah. is quite depressing actually <laughs> <laughs> i was just working out the other day i was like how long would it take to do this and it's yeah. about 160 years or something i thought well, I've, to, I've have to cherry pick which ones to do yeah. um so very much just concentrating on those and um and so, yeah, so the ne- my next, or a big project I'll be working on next is all about um, vanishing habitats you, um, in Britain. Yeah. British vanishing habitats, and um, which disappearing before our very eyes. So they're going to be, you know, again, recorded through paintings as a book and, and will be filmed as well. So Yeah, that's a really, that's a really interesting project. Yeah, it is actually. It is. Yeah, it's, it's really exciting. It's it's again. It's a little bit on the back of um, of the Arctic project. You know, I went, I went to the Arctic when um, I got fed up listening to Donald Trump talk about climate change. So I thought, well, I'll go and have a look for myself. And um, you know, I was at um, eighty degrees north, which is about three hundred miles from the North Pole, and um, on a boat, and there were polar bears swimming, looking for ice to fish from, and there's no ice, and and. Uh, I thought this is just insane and when I came back and was, was researching it um, suddenly I, I sort of realised that actually there's again talking about local projects there's just as many just as important mm. habitats that are very local to us that are also disappearing at just as fast a rate that we don't seem to be aware of and just behind me you know upon the Penwith Moors uh, we have um, Heathland and Heathland is now designated rarer than the rainforest. Wow. And nobody knows that. No. I didn't know that. Nobody knows that, but, um, but it is. So, um, so that's so one of my... you've got to go and paint it. I've got to go and paint it. <laughs> I've got to go and paint it. I just don't need to go to the rainforest. <laughs> but a little bit closer to home. Yeah, that, a really good project. Mm. Yeah, look forward to seeing that. Mm. Okay, um, what would you say to your younger self? What advice would you give? I would say, st- stay curious, mm. definitely. Stay curious and learn as many skills as you can and, and take every opportunity you can. Stay curious, take every opportunity you can, however scary it might be. Yeah. Throw yourself in a deep end because what you'll end up with coming out the other side of that deep end, scary bit, is a whole bunch of new skills. And they really, really will stand you in good stead. Mm. Um, and and just enjoy it. You know, concentrate on what makes you happy. Yeah, that's the real key. I think lots of children nowadays, but my our, our, my children have just just finished school, or just come at the end of finishing school, and the focus is so much on exams to get the good job to earn the money. And um, I say, no, forget all that. Do the opposite. <laughs> forget about them. I just put, concentrate on the fulfilment and, and do more whatever it is that makes you happy. Yeah. That's the real key. Yeah, that's great advice. I, I think, but don't tell the teachers that. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't say that. So be curious. Be curious, yeah. yeah. That's the main thing. Brilliant.
definitely. All right, thank you so much, Glyn, for letting us chat to you and sharing your advice. Thanks, Mel. Really great. I um, hope you guys really enjoyed that. Please go and check out Glyn's work on his website. I will leave all the links below so you can go and see what he's up to. Um, Do, it. Do it. And I will speak to you again, guys, in another creative conversation coming soon. All right, bye. If you enjoyed this conversation, don't forget to subscribe, share, and make sure you listen to all the other creative conversations we have done. Um, and then, you know, I was out in Essex painting salt marshes and salt marshes again. I think there's 60% of all salt marshes have gone in the last 20 years and salt marshes are 100 times better at storing carbon than the rainforest is. Nobody knows that. And, and they're being you know, destroyed. Um, and these are just, all just in England, let alone the rest of the world. Econ projects, even if I can't see how I'm going to do it. Yeah, no, definitely. <laughs> because that, I know I will learn. Yeah, I will absolutely. learn how to do it. Absolutely. I'm not going to like, not go, oh, that's it. But It's exactly that. <laughs> Otherwise you end up sort of, you know, stuck in your little comfort zone, going around and around and around in circles. Yeah. You know, exactly. which is, um, you know, which is okay. But it's not But you don't really. grow, do you? you? Yeah, you don't grow. No, mm. you only grow when you're actually under fire or when things are difficult or you can't see the end. Mm. You don't grow in when you're on a sofa. As no, well, you no, know. no, exactly. <laughs> you might grow. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you won't, you won't learn anything, no. you, will you? This was Creative Conversations and I'm Mel Chadwick.